Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video I want to talk about the German astronomer Henrik Willem Olbers and his dark night sky paradox. So let's jump straight to it. You might not have thought much about it before, but isn't it strange that night sky is dark? Well, perhaps not. We know that in the daytime it's light because at any one time, half of the Earth is immersed in the sun's radiation, and the other half is left in its shadow. But the night sky is not completely pitch black. The night sky is lit up by the moon and also the countless stars and galaxies. Olber's paradox is a paradox that concerns why the night sky isn't bright like it is in the daytime. It's named after Henrik Olber, a scientist who over the course of his career has made several contributions to science, including the discovery of asteroid Pallas, Comet Vesta and Comet Olbers. However, although his description of the paradox dates back to 1823, it wasn't the first reference to the problem, which has been historically documented back to at least the period of the ancient Greeks. Olbers' paradox goes as follows. We believe that the universe is infinite. There's no edge. We also believe that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic on very large scales. And this means that it looks the same at every location in the universe, and it looks the same in whatever direction you look in. In other words, the galaxies are distributed evenly throughout the universe. But if this were true, then there should be an infinite number of stars and galaxies in the universe, and at least one in every point on the sky that we look. Even though the stars and galaxies that are further away shine less brightly, there are also many more of them the further away you go. So the night sky should be as bright as day, but it's not. This is Olber's paradox. Over the years, many explanations have been used to try and solve the paradox, including a theory that dark clouds could lie between us and the stars, obscuring their light. However, if this were the case, then the clouds should eventually heat up from the radiation it absorbs from the stars, and then re-radiate some of that energy. They would no longer be dark. The paradox could also be used to argue that the universe isn't infinite, but actually there are even better ways to explain away the problem. Firstly, the paradox assumes that the universe is static, which we know isn't true. The universe is expanding, galaxies are moving further away from us every second, and so it's taking the light longer and longer to reach us. Secondly, it assumes that the universe is infinitely old, and we know this isn't true. By using the expansion rate of the universe, scientists have extrapolated back to the Big Bang, and this tells us that the universe is 13.8 billion years old. And since nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, we can't see the light from galaxies that are further away than 13.8 billion light years away from us. The introduction of the Big Bang Theory also brought up a new problem. The Big Bang Theory states that in the very early universe, the universe was an opaque fog, but then there was a point in time known as recombination that all of a sudden the universe became transparent. During this time, the universe was very, very bright and the skies would have been blinded by this radiation. And furthermore, it should still be visible today. But we don't see it, except we do, because the universe has expanded a lot since this radiation was first emitted. The radiation has been redshifted. Its wavelength has been stretched to longer wavelengths, which are only visible with radio telescopes. Using radio telescopes, scientists have found the universe is very, very bright, and that radiation is what we now know of as the cosmic microwave background. 
More recently, there was another scientific study that puts the paradox solutions to question. Galaxies are surrounded by reservoirs of gas, mostly made up of hydrogen. And one way astronomers can detect this hydrogen is by looking for a very characteristic emission line known as the Lyman Alpha Line, a line that can be seen even for very far away galaxies in their spectra, which is the distribution of energy as a function of their wavelength. Now, traditionally, when scientists took the spectra of galaxies, they had to use a mask with slits of where the galaxies are so that the light from the galaxies would be dispersed through the slit. But with new technology of integrated field units, or IFUs, these slits are no longer needed. Astronomers can now get spectra of every single pixel on their detectors. And this is what they did with a telescope called MUSE in the paper that I'll link down below. They found that almost every pixel in their detection contained Lyman alpha lines. And that means, in other words, that the entire sky must be filled with the glow of hydrogen, likely from the very earliest galaxies. So why is the night sky dark? Well, it's not, at least not in terms of the CMB or Lyman alpha emissions. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. As usual, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.